Well, at least I can say it's going to be a positive episode. If you actually want me to be completely honest, I was walking into this game expecting to really hate it. And I really mean really, really hate it. When I was growing up, I grew up with the mentality of why buy a sports game when I can go outside and play it. So of course, even to this day, I still kind of avoid sports games. Especially now with <clears throat> this going on. So you really have to color me surprised when I popped this thing in and found out it plays like an RPG? What? <laughs> and not to mention, the mechanics are nice and slow and very easily explained to a person. But then again, the game of golf is really easy to understand. On top of that, it is a single player sport. You don't have to worry about teams or cooperating or communications. It's all about you trying to get that little ball into the cup across the fairway. I do have to give you guys kind of a heads up that yes, I actually do know a little bit about golf. My dad was a giant fan of it for a while and still is. So terms like bogey, eagle, par, all that I'm very familiar with. So unlike FIFA many episodes ago, I walked into this knowing half the terminology and half the strategies. But the more and more I played this game, the more and more of this game was actually charming me. I was actually starting to get flashbacks like I was when I was playing Bakugan. It's also the little things about this game that really sunk its claws into me and kept me playing for a good while. Like, holy crap, when you boot this game up, it's like an RPG. There's cute commentary when you let it idle for too long. And the more and more you played, you realized to play on the next course, you have to get these challenges done. And okay, it's stuff like getting out of the rough, make sure you get a, try to get a hole in one, who can chip the ball closest to the hole, who can hit the ball the furthest, who can hit the ball the shortest, stuff like this. But yet, at the same time, the more and more I play these challenges, the more and more I realize that it is subtly teaching you tips and tricks on how to play the game. Because multiple and multiple times, after I get some of these challenges done, I went back and played a quick course. And my brain's going back to these challenges on how to clear some of these holes. Double checking where the wind's going, seeing what club I need to use, what, seeing how I need to spin the ball. Do I really need a full pull all the way back or halfway back? It's the subtle stuff that this game's teaching you how to play and teaching you the tips and tricks of it as well. I mean, color me impress. I was severely walking into this with a low, low bar. Not only did this jump over the bar, but I think it kind of set a new one as well. Oh wait, I'm not done. As soon as I think that's all, no, there is not. There's an actual character creator and a my career mode on top of that as well. I mean, granted, I failed to complete the course the first time around, but I kind of didn't care. Just something about this game kept on making me come back to play more and more and more. And especially seeing that it's not a team game, it really knew how to keep me coming back for more and more and more. And on top of that, the more I did play, the more I realized that there's even more challenges to complete even more courses to play, and just overall, just buried content that's just willing and waiting to be explored and unearthed. Now I say all this because these games were meant to be played all year until the next one came out. And I'm really, really grateful that these games did not get the loot boxes that FIFA and Madden ultimately saw. But then again, when you actually sit down and think about it, it's kind of hard for these games to get loot boxes. You're by yourself with clubs and characters. I mean, the most they could possibly do is maybe a new outfit, maybe a special limited edition club. It was a perfect storm for these games, where at the time of the loot boxes and the Tiger Wood stuff that was going on at the time, they picked the perfect time to shut these games down. Because there's no possible way loot boxes can be brought in, at least that I know of, and spoil this game and single player centered for these loot boxes to actually matter. And we all know that loot boxes crave on multiplayer. And when there is little to no multiplayer to speak of, they hold no power. They're completely optional and, and that drives away the people who want to spend the money on loot boxes onto other things. Which for me drives home an actual closing point that's going on here. EA at one point knew how to make good sports titles. They knew what to do. And as much as I wanted to avoid the topic, I am going to have to touch upon it in this episode. Recently, EA has been coming under fire about their loot boxes in all their games. Now, I am not supportive of loot boxes whatsoever. I do not believe if you pay any price for a video game, these microtransactions, these randomized surprise mechanics in these games 
should not be there. I should not have to pay even more than past $60 for these games, when over a decade ago, that was more than fine. It just really, really shows they got a taste of money and they don't want to let it go. They don't want to focus on making a good game again. And this is what this game is really showing me. How much heartbreak it's really given me here. It's just how much EA doesn't want to give a crap about you and give a crap about a good game anymore. They just want to shove something out, they just want to shove a disc in your face and say, hey, give us more money. We don't care about you, we don't care about your habits, just give us more money. Money, 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 money. Now I'm going to cut this here short because I am going to just go into a rant about this. So let's go back to the positives here. This game for me is just great. I find myself picking it back up every now and then. I find myself actually looking on eBay for an empty game case like I did with Bakugan. And I can gladly say that I want to play this game again. And this is really awkward coming from myself, who for a long time put off sports games. Who was in that party of why are these sports games constantly made? But then again, I've always said this as well. It always takes that one, either be it food, video games, movies, music, whatever. It always takes that one perfect example, that one gateway thing that can possibly change your mind. And I think I found my gateway sport game. And this is where I can sit here and calmly and affirmatively say I give Tiger Woods a 4 out of 5. It is a recommended title. For those who want a slower game, who can handle playing by themselves a lot more and don't really want to interact with people. A sport game you can actually be calm with. And on top of that, this is one of those sports games that's easy to pick up. It only uses the thumbsticks. Oh dear lord, both FIFA and Madden drove me up a tree with their game controls and mechanics. They were just very confusing at the time, especially when no tutorials were available. Let me cut this episode short and let's just wrap things up here. This game was good, loot boxes are bad, EA needs to do something to redeem themselves. This game gets a 4 out of 5, and I'm going to pitch this to you guys. How do you guys feel if I gave you guys a choice on what game I played next? As of right now, I've been buying these games in clumps and using a randomizer to pick the order. But what happens if I just buy the clump of games and you guys pick on what I play next? If you guys like the idea, be sure to leave a comment down below or even send me a tweet. I'm always looking for new ideas to help expand this channel and even to help expand the community as well. So let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite sports game growing up? Did you guys play a sports game or did this review help you open your eyes up in any facet? Or maybe even trying this challenge yourself? Now of course, we don't know what I'm going to play next so the only way to find out is be sure to subscribe and ring that bell to know when new episodes get popped up. There are going to be streams every Wednesday and Sunday so be sure to check those out. So until next time guys, I'm gone, I'm Ghost, I'm out of here past tense, and I'll see you guys next week!